Trini Girl Natural. Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about, I guess one of the most interesting lines to me as a PJ, maybe it's just that high hanging fruit, but it's called Bekura Beauty, and it's one of the most, if not the most expensive natural hair line, at least the ones in my radar, which are like the all natural ones. So today I decided to just come on and just talk about it and just discuss whether it's like, worth it, whether it's good, whether it's useful, whether you are on it. If there's anybody out there who all you buy is Bakura Beauty and that's how you live your life, let me know who you are in the comments. Adopt me <laughs> because I can only afford, or I, I only choose to spend like once a year I might get like two things if they have free shipping, one thing if they don't because again just the amount of pennies going out the door is a little bit steep. But I do overall think that their products work well. Uh, then my favorite we'll discuss and uh, is there anything better out there we will also discuss so let's get right into it disclaimer I'm kind of starting a new segment called empties and thrown out because <laughs> I don't have most of them anymore like you know I use them and I didn't save the, the jars I think I used them before I actually really got serious about my channel which I am now so please subscribe um, there'll be a lot more videos coming but anyhow I'm an OG PJ but I'm kind of new in the YouTube game, so I have like things that I used way back when that I might still want to review and I'm just going to remember them. I am going to maybe like, you know, insert some pictures or something like from Instagram of me using the various products. And I do still have one with me, but one that I just got this Black Friday that I just tried and I want to reveal how it worked. So let's get started, <laughs> finally. So let me just start with the newest first just because I have it so that I wouldn't look completely crazy. The Honey Latte Detangling Hair Milk. These are the ingredients, you know how I like it. So it's like a really great ingredient list. So what I find about the Bakura in general is that the ingredients are pretty simple. I mean, like what I like about Blue Rose Beauty is that they have that girl's little exotic things thrown in. Something that you just don't see in every other product. So like, you know, the Blue Rose, I might get some pink rose petals or extract of rosebud. But with the Bakura, it's pretty standard. I mean, Babasu seed oil, it's, been, it's kind of getting around, so I wouldn't say it's rare. But the ingredients, when you look at it kind of in an abstract sense, I like to look at it close up and abstract. Abstract sense is just water, oil, butter, fatty alcohols, and honey. So it's pretty simple. I think that their selling point is that it's like specialty craft spa collection according to them. So basically, a lot of the items are just like your DIY or just like my DIY. It's so good you can do it yourself. Well, I'm going to do it myself. But I do think that this is an exception in the sense that I haven't gotten that good yet. <laughs> the formulation in this is really nice. It's really moisturizing. It's really creamy. I'm going to show you the texture in the demo. I'm not going to pour any of this in my hand for you now. No, I don't love you that much. Not yet. If you're going to be subscribed to me and I have like a thousand subscribers, I'll start pouring out like... $24 containers like in my hand and stuff but for now look at the picture <laughs> and then you'll see the demo you know <laughs> this was really good this really surprised me because I usually don't like hair milk so I was like last Black Friday um the sale was okay I, I didn't have free shipping but it was a good enough sale I forget what it was maybe just 25% or maybe 30 maybe 30 um 30% 30 off no free shipping, so I decided to just get this one thing. This was like my Bakura haul of one. So I joked about that on Instagram. I have tried all the deep conditioners that I wanted to try. I'm really, really picky about ingredients, so the best line you can think of, there are probably a few things that I won't try just based on the ingredients. So like this one, some of this stuff had like polyquats and waxes, which I don't use. Um, so I tried all of these things that I'm gonna try. I'm not gonna try the dressings. I'm not really a grease girl anyhow. And in terms of the leave-ins, the other one was like, they said it was, it was meant to be an oil. It didn't have water in the first, as the first ingredient. It was like oil and honey. And they said that it could be like a pre-poo or like an oil rinse. So yeah, I just wanted the leave-in. So this was the closest thing to a leave-in that they had. So even though I generally, seems like hair milks aren't really working that well for me, I decided to just go ahead and try it. Um, I did kind of like the Shea Moisture Cook and I discussed standard for a little while, but then the last time I used it, I wasn't super impressed. Like, I like the slip. The moisture is okay. I didn't really like the definition. But 
this was awesome i actually loved it i was like oh my god i actually love this what do i do now you know because i love this expensive hair milk it's a leave-in it's a leave-in with some extra moisture even though it says it's a hair milk lots of moisture lots of slip that rich creamy feel it was like almost like the camino's i don't i know i'm probably like comparing products to other products so if you know the pj you probably wouldn't be like you'd be like what's that one like i know i'm sorry but let me just say that and then I'll try to figure out something more general. So it's almost like the Camuros Latte Leave-In, but I feel like this one is even richer and creamier than that one. It smells really good. It smells like... It smells like... I want to say cream cheese frosting, but I could be way off. But kind of like that, you know. The scent is titled Nectarine Vanilla, but it smells really good. It smells like whipped frosting to me. It's one of those sweet cakey scents that I guess I love. This was definitely a winner. It was perfect. I would definitely buy it again. Just one a year, I guess, on Black Friday. <laughs> Mercury, you'll be seeing me once a year with this one, well, one or two products based on if you have free shipping or not. This leave-in was $18 for 8.5 ounces. Usually for my leave-ins, I would pay like $14 tops, pretty much. $18 is a, is a chunk of change more. It's pretty pricey, but I did like it. So I am going to actually show you a little demo of me just using the honey latte. Like this is the only one that I have. So I am going to show you a little demo of just how it went on and you know, but I just love how it felt in my hair. I love how it looked in my hair and it's winter and my hair still feels moisturized. Like it, this, this is the same, that same washing go. So my hair still feels moisturized and everything. So yeah, I'm in love. Can I call it my favorite? I can't be that disloyal yet to call it my favorite, but it's up there. My favorite leave-in right now is the She Scented Coco leave-in. And this, this bad boy just went up there. Yeah. Serious stuff. So, you know, I'm going to probably have to do a showdown at one point to determine which one I like better. I think for now, I'm going to bring out this when I'm going somewhere special or something like that. Or the mood, the situation calls for it. <laughs> I'm going to just show you a little demo of how I did my wash and go with this leave-in. So, take a look. <laughs> so this is my hair with no product on it. I guess you know the drill by now. And this is the product. Then this is the texture of the product finally. <laughs> and I apply it the way I usually do, just around my roots and then kind of smooth it down and work it through doing like some smoothing and raking until it's all distributed. I make sure that I catch any shed hair because I don't want it to just end up back in there in some random spot. So I was just checking for shed hair. This is my hair after I work in the product. My hair was just so light and fluffy and airy that I was just kind of amazed just how much of a cloud I got. After that, I just finished my wash and go, adding oil, focusing on the edges and the ends, working that in. my hair after the oil this is the side with flaxseed gel and this is the side with the leave-in and oil that's it I just kind of add my flaxseed gel after that and do a final smooth of my hair to make sure I haven't missed any spots keep it tight and right like I said and do my shake which I <laughs> enjoy for some reason um, and that's it that was my wash and go so that was it you can see how great my hair looked with this leave-in and I really enjoyed it and it just went to the top of my list or at least the top two yeah top two on to the ghost products the ones that I had and I don't have anymore <laughs> so the first one that we'll talk about is the Kako Back Conditioning Hair Mask. So it, the branding on oil is kind of similar in terms of like the look and feel, but it's like in a little tiny eight ounce jar. I guess like a jar like this one. The ingredients were like water, cocoa seed butter, coconut oil for those who don't like that. They have some cocoa seed oil and then just BTMS and cocoa and that was pretty much it. So again, I guess the ingredients are pretty simple. I think if you're in my group, last October we did like a DIY challenge, so I did experiment with like shea butter, cocoa powder, coconut milk, honey. I made a deep conditioner with like all of that stuff in it. I'm trying to remember what else, but like all that stuff basically. 
I have like really old videos actually with me showing you like my all DIY because we did a challenge that where we just use all DIY from cleanser to styler just all DIY for a month that's the whole other story really my hair looked great but it was like too much hair butter for me and I was very relieved to shampoo at the end is the short version of that story but I loved the deep conditioner like I loved it loved it loved it I think I do have a really old video and I will consider linking it if it's not too embarrassing <laughs> right here so but anyway basically the whole level of that story is the Kako deep conditioner from Bakura felt just like my DIY mask in my hair but the Kako deep conditioner is $24 $24 for nine ounces so I did get like a, a use and a half, I would say, maybe two uses if you stretch it, but it's still $24 for nine ounces. To put it in context, like you can get Shea Moisture for like $12 for like 16 ounces or something like that. So, yeah, you know, mm, you know, I don't know. Like I said, if, if all you do is Bakura, just holler at your girl, let me know in the comments. The texture was like whipped chocolate pudding, I guess. Like it wasn't heavy at all, it, it looked like your Play Whips, the chocolate one was kind of like that except it was richer and creamier than that chocolate one, like that chocolate yogurt. But that's the kind of texture, so it was really exotic and fun to put on your hair. And of course it did the trick, except, like I said with my DIY, like my hair was kind of coated by the end. So I wouldn't say my hair felt coated, but it felt like there was something on it. I mean, it didn't feel like rinse clean. And it wasn't like something heavy or bad. Like I would still probably use it again. I don't know if I'd purchase it again, but if somebody gave it to me, I'd probably use it happily. But my hair is really sensitive. Like it's really low porosity and it's really sensitive to feel like anything's on it. That's why I don't use waxes. I don't use anything with poly quartz. I don't use even the Camaro's ginger rinse. That leaves my hair feeling like there's something on it. Because I'm just used to completely nothing coating on my hair. So that one Kako bark wasn't really for me just because of that. But I love the texture, I love the scent, it was really moisturizing, it was really pricey. <laughs> I think if you just try it once, you know, it's like bungee jumping, try it once, live your best life, you know what I mean? And then you can like either make it yourself or just go back to your Shea Moisture <laughs> or whatever else you use. The next thing I tried from them was the Vanilla Whiskey Restoring Hair Soak and that baby is $25 for nine ounces. I think that one was only like good for one use for me. It didn't really stand out, like it probably had a nice scent, it felt nice, it was moisturizing, like it was good, like these products are good, don't get me wrong, but did I fall over the moon like oh my god I have to buy this again? No, like I think the only one I had that reaction for was probably this and I would probably say also the yarn which is coming up next. So the Kako was like okay but I don't know about that feeling and the vanilla whiskey was like it was nice but I'm not bowled over but in terms of the ingredients it has like water pumpkin seed oil hemp seed oil babasu seed oil they do put their good stuff high up like you have to give it to them for that like most of the companies you would see whatever their selling point is at the bottom but these guys they put their selling point at the top and then the other stuff after like Shea Moisture you'd be going through water Shea butter, like all the like glycerin and all the like two other things, and then at the very last and be after the fragrance, probably you would find the Babasu seed oil. So the products are worth more than the typical product in terms of the ingredients and the order. When you get to the middle, which is where they usually have the BTMS and cellar alcohol, then after that you get some kernel protein. So like I said, you know, it is a protein treatment. And then some malt extract and vanilla oil and marshmallow root, burdock root. In terms of as a protein treatment, it didn't really have as much kick for me as the She Said It Okro. But my hair is just good. Like when I used the She Said It Okro, I really had a kick. But even now when I use it recently, I don't even, can't even tell. So I am actually going to reduce my protein treatments to maybe every couple months because I probably don't need it. But this vanilla didn't really do much for me as a protein treatment. I didn't feel it anyway, but it was super moisturizing. It smelled great, felt great, yada yada. And then we had the Yam Nectar, and that one was $24 again for nine ounces. That one was interesting, because that one was just, it looked like just honey or something, but as soon as you put it into your hair, it just like turned into like a moisturizing foam with slip. Like it was really 
fun to use and it smelled great and my hair felt amazing like super hydrated after so that's the other one that from my career that I would buy again I would buy the yam nectar and I would buy this honey latte detangling hair milk the yam nectar like it starts with honey it's clover honey but it starts with honey so they're not doing you like all the other products where you just have a trace at the bottom so it goes honey first then glycerin and then oils olive oil avocado oil metal foam seed oil and then there's Maluka honey, which is the pricey one. Then you get to the BTMS and stuff, which is like, again, like their formulations have it in the middle. And after the BTMS, they have some rosewood oil, which sounds interesting, and copaiba oil, which also sounds interesting, <laughs> and some yucca root extract. Of course, it smells like honey, duh, right? But the way the texture changed, like you thought it's going to be sticky, but as soon as it touches your hair, it just kind of melts. And of course, they said to put it on soaking wet hair. But this was super hydrating, it was a great product, $24 for 9 ounces. So I guess that was pretty much it. <laughs> I have a love hate relationship with them. They probably think I'm crazy because I read about their products and I whine about how pricey it is and I guess everybody does that but I'm a, I'm a customer, I have to say, I can't lie, I'm a customer but I am, I don't even know how to describe it, I'm a once a year, one or two products customer but I am a customer. And I will keep looking at their stuff because I do find their formulations interesting. I do like the way that they put the, the expensive stuff, the quality stuff first in the product. And I do like the way that it really does seem handcrafted. Of course, I handcraft myself, so if you're a DIYer, you might just be like, make it yourself. And I am going to try making that yam nectar myself before Black Friday just to see how it comes out. So maybe it might go the way of the caco and I may not get it again just because if I can make it myself. I guess I'll probably let you guys know if you want to know how my DIY yam nectar turns out that's going to cost me $2 instead of $24. <laughs> just let me know in the comments and when I eventually do it, I will tell you. So that was it. Let me know your experience with Kura. Let me know if you've heard of them. Let me know if you would buy products for like $24, $20. How you feel about buying pricey stuff if the quality is there as well. Because, I mean, I buy nice stuff, but this one I have to, you know, I have to respect. I have to put some respect on it. I look forward to hearing from you. If you enjoyed this video, like it, subscribe, support, <laughs> and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.